All right, thank you. Hi, everyone. Uh, my name is Chris Alvarela. I'm a PhD student from the Buenos Aires University. Our research is a joint project with the Professor Faseli's team from University of Utah. And, and it's about a genetic algorithm for crystal structure prediction and its optimization for the use of the OSG resources. First, uh, an overview of, uh, for this uh, presentation. Um, I'm going to give you a general introduction to crystal structure prediction and our research, then why we need and why we use the OSG for our project, how we do the job distribution on the OSG, and of course, uh, our research progress and the next steps for us. Well, first, uh, what is crystal structure prediction? Uh, if we have any molecule, we want to be able to predict the crystal structure of that molecule uh, based only of the knowledge of the chemical composition or of the chemical diagram of that molecule. Even on those cases where polymorphisms are present, this means when the crystal structure exist, exists in more than two uh, crystalline structures. Uh, this is very important for uh, industrial, uh, industrial science and academics because um, this simplifies the development of new compounds and materials, the designs of crystal upon crystal and the understanding of the crystallization process and the polymorphism. <clears throat> the hard part of this is that even for a small molecule, uh, we have a large number of possible configurations. Uh, and for all of this, uh, for all of these possible configurations, we need to do a structural optimization and the energy calculation of this, of this uh, crystalline structure, of this possible crystalline structure, looking for the minimum uh, energy arrangement of this, of this uh, atom of the molecule, right? So, uh, uh, so uh, this procedure take a high computational cost for us. Uh, to overcome this, um, my group has been working on an algorithm named MGIC, Modified Genetic Algorithm for Crystals. And, and this algorithm creates a random initial population with uh, the individuals uh, are the, the possible crystalline structure. We prepare these individuals and, and, and make the energy evaluation. And then we classify uh, in a list with the best structure, uh, the, uh, that one that has the, the minimal energy, right? So we can recombine the, the genes of this of the best structure and create another set of individuals, uh, means the, another set of crystalline structure to, to, to start again and, and make the, the, the energy evaluation and, and, and start over again. <clears throat> so why we use the OSG for a project? Well, we use the software Quantum Expresso for the energy calculation for each structure. Uh, so we distribute this energy calculation to the OSG nodes because the high performance and the efficiency of these nodes and it's very important for us that the OSG allow us to distribute the calculations independently. Uh, that means that, that uh, we can evaluate each possible structure independently of the other. And the OSG is the only open size grid that scales to the level that is needed for crystal structure prediction. Well, how is our job distribution? Um, well, as I mentioned before, we create a, a random population and send the input files need for Quantum Expresso um, <clears throat> to do the energy calculation uh, to the OSG. The OSG run each job and as the calculation finished, we classify it in a list of, uh, of the best structure. Um, this list is obviously constantly uh, updated. From this list, we create new children, it means new, new possible crystal structure, and uh, the input files of Quantum Expresso are sent to, to the OSG, 
uh, to do the energy calculation and so on. <clears throat> but uh, what happened on the OST? Well, uh, when I run my first job alone uh, around one year and a half, maybe, <laughs> we, we, we run the Quantum Expresso as a pre-installed software. I think that, that is the correct name of this, uh, of this I don't know. Um, so that's mean that was that the problem with this is that the quantum expresso was not available in all nodes. So we have uh, uh, we have uh, we have the job when when we run the job the job the job fail immediately, no. So now we we have quantum expresso in a container. So quantum expresso can run in any. Uh, in, a, in any OSQ node. Another issue that we have was, uh, was that we send the job uh, one by one. So we have problems slowing the, the queue and, and that kind of stuff. So now we, we send the, the, the jobs through a list by, by groups. So that, that, is, uh, that makes a better distribution for all of us. Another issue that we have is that uh, the individual or the, or the possible structure has a different memory requirement. So instead of, of relaunch the job with a bigger memory requirement, we use this line that allow us to, to release the job with a bigger, with a bigger uh, memory requirement if the structure needed. Um, <clears throat> Um, then, and I think that, that the most uh, important implementation for us is the check, self checkpoint. Uh, because in our case, uh, and according to the size of the molecule, the energy calculation could take more time than we expected. So, uh, at first, we are using MPI to finish our job faster, but we found another series of issues with this. So uh, the OSC staff give us the checkpoint implementation as a, sol as a solution. Um, that means that if we have long jobs or if the job is kicked uh, kick off of the running node, the job is prepared to start from the last checkpoint in the same or, or in a different node. <clears throat> um, so for us, the implementation of the third checkpoint is, is as, as follows. Uh, we have the, the quantum expresso input file, and we can set a safe, uh, a safe stop uh, in the input file of quantum expresso. We set uh, in four, every four hours. Uh, we start the calculation, and if the calculation ends before the four hours, the job is, is done and the job go out. If not, we make a checkpoint and we use an input, an input creator. This is an extra algorithm that <clears throat> allow us to, to, to create a new input file from the last generation of Quantum Expresso and, and restart the, the Quantum Expresso calculation um, from the last checkpoint file. Uh, and start again and, and repeat if the job is not finished. <clears throat> the checkpoint also allows us to, to handle another uh, quantum expresso exit. For example, we have uh, this exit that say not enough, blah, blah, blah. <laughs> we know that this exit needs to be relaunched from the last iteration of quantum expresso. So we set this exit to make a, a, a checkpoint um, and start over there. Um, what else? So uh, uh, there is another uh, quantum expresso exit that we need to, to, to set as a checkpoint is the number, the, the quantum expresso exit number three. And it's that uh, they need to start with more um, itineration steps. So we, we start over the, the last itineration and, and relaunch, relaunch, no, they start the job from that point. Uh, then we know that, that the quantum expresso exit code with the number one, that there are some uh, error exits. So we, that exit we handle like the job is uh, are done. 
so uh, go out and and uh, it don't it don't uh, make a echo. Uh, well, at the beginning, uh, we we have a lot of jobs that uh, not not find Quantum Espresso or they don't have enough memory. So we run a lot of jobs and finish right away. Then uh, we have uh, an incompatibility, uh, the incompatibility issue, the Quantum Espresso of the MPI. So uh, we have uh, jobs that, that run a lot of hours without a valid exit. And, and this, uh, this was the point that we, we realized that we need the checkpoint. So now we are testing very well the checkpoint implementation in a low and a medium scale uh, to avoid these previous situations. Back to our project, uh, we are testing with methanol molecule because it's small, so it let us to obtain faster results to see any issue and fix it. And of course, because it is very important and relevant for crystal structure prediction. So this is this is a preliminary result for us. We have the, the experimental structure. This is what we want to get. And we have its energy and its, um, uh, its spectrum, as a, a spectrum as a reference. And these two are the most uh, similar crystal structure that the MTAC got until now. Um, we got this from, from a recently run. Uh, we evaluate around 2,000 structures and with a QA calculation average per structure of 12 uh, core hours. And well, we know now that the MTAC, <clears throat> that the MTAC uh, is it's doing that we want to do it to uh, and, and go to the to the molecule that we want to obtain. Um, that the implementation to the to the, to improve the, the use of the OS chip, for example, the self checkpoints, take time, but also improve the performance of the running jobs. Um, we are making some improvement to our code and at the same time optimizing the execution of the job with the checkpoint implementation. And uh, for for uh, next steps, we want to change the test molecule and explore also the possible configuration to see if we can get similar structures to the uh, to the to that one that we want. Uh, well, the OSC support uh, the participation of the OSC Virtual School. Uh, 2021. Uh, let me know that are a lot of tools and resources available on the OSC to improve the use of the OSC resources. That is very important uh, for us and for the OSC users and, and, and for all of us. And also the OSC staff they always are there to see what is the best job submission for each project. So thanks and thanks for, for letting me share my experience uh, with all of you. And, and if there is any questions. Thank you, Christelle. If anybody has questions, they can drop them in the chat or use the reactions option in their Zoom window to raise their hand. And Crystal, I just wanted, I, I have a question of my own actually. You showed several graphs of the core hour usage that was required for your work before you implemented self checkpointing. It seems like your computations need fewer total hours of usage now. Is that because um, you had executions that were getting interrupted before? I know you mentioned that some of the MPI based tasks, um, because of the way MPI was working were, were taking a long time, but it looked like you have saved a significant amount of overall computing time that's necessary to achieve the same science outcome. Is that true? Yes, yes, it's true. Uh, when when we start with the set checkpoint implementation, uh, the, the hours uh, 
was improved, uh, were improved very, very, uh, very, very well. So now uh, the jobs, all the jobs are finished uh, the way that they have to finish, not with with uh, issues uh, about, uh, I don't know, uh, like the MPA uh, issue that, that took so long because they got stuck on the node and, and all stuff. So uh, the self checkpoint implementation, uh, it was a, a very good solution for us. And Tim, I thought I saw your hand up. Yeah, and then uh, your, your question was close enough, so we're good. <laughs> okay, great. Any other questions for Cristal before we move on to our next speaker? Got time for maybe one more, but again, we'll have the discussion sessions later on as well. All right, well, thank you again, Cristal.